I am Potato Jet and I'm addicted to FPV. You know, it started off with simple fun, it was exciting and it was just one or two FPV drones, but before I knew it, it had been kind of taken over. When he's flying FPV, it's like he's not here anymore. I mean, his body's physically here, but he's clearly in another world. But thanks to my sponsor, DJI, I've been able to install the new O3 air unit into all my FPV drones. And ever since then, life has just become so much more clear. I mean, 1080p resolution to the goggles. This is actually what I'm seeing. I get so much more detail and clarity in what I'm seeing. And also the air unit can record 4K internally. So even if the camera I have mounted up top is just a fake piece of plastic, I can still walk away with some solid Solid footage. Isn't that great? So does this mean there's gonna be less drones flying around the house? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm Donovan Davis. I'm a senior product specialist for DJI North America. I'm Stuart Cram. I'm a senior marketing manager at DJI. This fireplace is a nice touch though. Having the fire, yeah. it feels like we're all feeling the Christmas spirit, but really we're just cold as shit. <laughs> We're talking a little bit about the new O3 and oh, there's a lot of crossover with the Avada because they're kind of similar. Before you used to have your goggle feed that you could record in your goggles and then you could put a memory card in the air unit itself and record there and then you had a camera up top which give you like the best image quality. I never really threw a memory card in the air unit because it was just like a slightly better version of what I was seeing out of the camera, which I just didn't really have interest in doing anything with. But now what's interesting about the O3 is you, is essentially the Avada camera, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's like the gap itself is way smaller. I could use this footage actually. I think there's obviously advantages of still having an action camera mounted on top. You have control of your frame rates, but at the same time, I think there's a lot of people that are gonna be satisfied with the quality that you're getting out of the O3. For some, it might be enough, right? The main difference that you're seeing is that you're getting full 1080 HD through the air. Like that's being transmitted to the goggles now. Also, the signal is just much, much stronger. Video processing has also been greatly improved. You're really feeling that smoothness. Penetration is vastly improved. Bando flying through walls, through thick brush, and also with the Bata, like my willingness to fly up a creek bed with lots of little twigs and stuff like that. The goggles, I'm less interested in capturing the best image quality, but it's more of like, what can I see as a pilot to make sure I don't whack into thin branches or like a little fence. You can see a fence coming from way further out than you used to be able to, or thin wires going into the Avada. What do you guys think about the motion controller? I think that for new pilots, it's absolutely incredible. Whereas with the Mode 2 controller, like think about how long it took to get comfortable with a Mode 2 controller. That just gives you a shortcut right into the flight experience. At first, I thought it was kind of strange that the Avada was going to, by default, be shipped out with a motion controller. But I think my mind was really changed about this motion controller when I handed it to a few people, never flown FPV before. I think you should try flying FPV right now, getting a tattoo. You might be the first person to ever do it. I've never flown FPV though. It's easy, before. it's easy, trust me. Oh God. So a lot of people, when they start flying, they start going like this, and if they crash, they're like, Ugh. You can't do that right now, wow. or else you will literally forever remember All right, I guess, I guess that's a good reason. That's a good reason. <laughs> this is temporary anyways, right? Yeah, we already messed up a few times. Quick instructions. Right. A lot of people tend to do this to try to turn the drone. Just try to do this. So if you turn like this, the drone will turn that way. Okay. You pull the trigger to move, you let go of the trigger, you stop. And then you point it up, and you pull the trigger, you go up. What's this for here? What's, what's this thing? Don't worry, that's a brake. Okay. But you won't need it. Easy. I got this. Or not. Double tap the red button. Motors are starting. Now press and hold. The, uh, the red button still? Uh-huh. And then pull the trigger. There we go. Oh, are you on sport mode? Oh, no, you're good. It's real easy. Is he flinching a lot? Yeah, he's moving all over the place. Dang, it's totally messed up. Uh, oh, man. Right. Get out of here. Sorry, this is supposed to be my moment, man. Right, guys, so I'm Get out of here. It's, it's less expensive and way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph's first time flying FPV while getting a tattoo at the same time. Wait, is it his first time flying FPV or his yeah, first time flying five. FPV while getting a tattoo? It's actually pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I want one now. Flying first time, no issue. It's pretty impressive. While getting tattooed. Oh, dude, you didn't even get instructions on this. I know, he, he just let him go. Wait, have you flown this before? Never. You've never flown it and you just kind of figured it out? Yeah. I'm flying between the bikes. Damn, this is your first time flying this? <laughs> Dude, you're just sending it. 
pretty easy, huh? It's awesome. Like if this was an FPV, you would have lost three of them by now. This is where you see all these Instagram pictures of people. On, oh, okay. Uh, on, Dude, on it's impossible for you not to look cool right now. <laughs> Except for... Right now. <laughs> but... The Vada is really the type of drone that I wish was around when I was starting to learn. Oh, my right, God, yeah. Because you could just start off in normal mode, fly it like a Mavic, line of sight even, and then put on the goggles, get used to that, and then maybe go into sport mode, go a little bit faster, and then go into manual mode, but then you can still limit it so it doesn't flip over, and then you can finally go into full manual mode. I came out of the RC helicopter world, thankfully, before FPV. So I was used to full manual control, but I still spent probably twice as much time fixing as I did flying in the beginning. It was just fly, crash, repair, fly, crash, repeat. So this is the V2 and this is the goggles too. Why, why is it not the three? Other than the dent in the V2s, which is not standard. That's me customizing um, the goggles. Um, I heard you're supposed yeah. to do that. They look almost identical to the V1. So this is an iteration of the V1 goggles into V2 goggles. The goggles two is an entirely new design, obviously much lighter, smaller, full 1080 HD. That's why it's goggles two as opposed to goggles V3. There's some advantages to both. I mean, I'm probably gonna go with the goggles two because I like that it's just easier to pack and you don't have to unscrew the antennas if you're gonna travel with it. Lens cover is also really cool. Yeah. Because of burn-ins, yeah. which I've experienced before. Yep. <laughs> Oops, I left my goggles sitting in the sun, crap. But some people do like the comfort of the V2s. If you wanna get 120 frames per second, right? You get that out of the V2s, 100 frame per second limit on the goggles too. If you wore glasses, you would have to wear that underneath these goggles, yeah. right? But now you have these knobs underneath. The diopter adjustment is super helpful. This goes to minus eight to two. Minus eight to two. Those little discs that come with the goggles, those actually can have prescription lenses put in them and you can add them. So if your prescription is beyond that range. For uh, astigmatism also. Seriously a game changer for me, like actually. You know, it's like I was just smashing my glasses in and now I don't have to really worry about it aside from just putting my glasses somewhere. When you do the diopter adjustment in here, once you've got it to where it's sharpest and it's looking as clear as possible, then you actually can turn, push in the knob and turn, and that locks in that exact adjustment for you. So what's the range like compared to the previous air unit? Spec-wise, it's a pretty big difference. So four kilometers, but now with O3, it's like 10 kilometers. More than double in range then. Yeah, right, but like, and you wouldn't necessarily like fly that far, but then, right. you know, penetration, reliability. If you were to take the V2 goggles and pair it with the O3, do you still get that range? Yes. So the improved transmission is taking place in the air unit, not necessarily the goggles ability to receive it. One of the things I remember hearing at first is that these goggles too will not work with the original air unit, which was tough for me because I have so many air units sitting around, but I heard that there might be an update to that. It is something that we are going to do. I don't think it'll be available immediately, but there has been uh, enough interest in that that we've we've essentially committed to uh, to making that compatibility so that you wouldn't end up in scenarios where you're having to take multiple goggles. Thank Jesus. Look, I, ha I found some FPV professionals. Hey, Wait, is that I've been waiting for you. And be able to just slide this in and this in into like yeah. a corner of a backpack. These definitely take up a main compartment That's in your bag. That's not gonna back. fit in your pocket. This right. probably will. Yeah, exactly. Like oh yeah. <laughs> You guys, uh, small, you guys love though. the big controllers. Yeah, we do like the big controllers. I feel like one with the drone, honestly. <laughs> That's why I use it. This is clearly Gene's goggles, because I need to stretch these out a little bit <laughs> so that this actually gets down in my pocket. I just want to be able to put the battery on the back of the strap or yeah. something. Just yeah, I'm sure people cable. will come That's out true. with straps. I'm going to make a little 3D holder. I'm going to hot glue it. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy over here actually engineers it, like, where he's like, all these cool things. I'm like, I just get some hot glue out. <laughs> yeah, like, so he just do it on there. I remember when I first started flying Mac manual mode and FPV, I was like, well, this is so much harder. How is this better? It's so much harder to fly. Yeah. But then once I started to get comfortable with it, now I realized like, oh, I have so much more control over what the drone is doing now and what it's about to do. Precision. Opposed to, yeah, precision. precision. Now, whenever I have GPS working with me, then it's harder for me because I'm like, oh, it's, it's doing all this stuff. So tips for someone that's flying FPV in manual mode, for the first time. Simulator? Simulator. 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 It's not gonna fly exactly the same way as a drone will when you get it up in the air for, for the first time, right? There's not usually simulating like wind or anything like that, but 
you at least kind of know those panic states. The beauty of the simulator is that it can get you to the point where you want the drone to do this and you're not thinking, oh wait, which stick am I supposed to move yes. around again? Also a good way to save your money. Because yeah. <laughs> you will destroy a lot of drones yeah. when, you're, when you don't have a sim. How many drones have you destroyed, you think? I, there, I have a wall. <laughs> Racing especially, oh yeah. Oh man, yeah. Racing is one of those things where you're consistently testing the limits of what the drone can do, yeah. right? How fast can I get as close as possible to that thing flying backwards? Like, that's basically what you're doing with racing. In case you don't know Paul or Nurk, world champion this guy. And now shooting movies and yep. commercials. It's again why I like to call it precision drones. It's like my racing practice taught me how to fly really well, really precisely, under pressure. A good shot is not necessarily flying a racetrack. I get asked a lot, can you please slow down a little bit? Yeah, <laughs> but you know, yeah. it's, it, it, having that experience has been awesome. I used to spend 10 hours a day going out to fields and practicing. 10 and hours a day? Yep, I get there at 10 a.m. and I would fly until 8 p.m. <laughs> I bring out a cooler, I bring out a tent. Right now, I'm trying to evolve from grasshopper level to like <laughs> whatever slightly above grasshopper yeah. level. And I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fly three packs a day. That's great. 10 hours, yeah, that's 10 what it takes. <laughs> you're, you're aiming for like 100 to 125 batteries. Oh, yeah. Biggest mistakes you see new FPV pilots doing? Flying yeah. unsafely. Yeah. Ah. Be in an open space, don't be around people. Like, let's be really respectful about the airspace that we share with people. So, trying to be disruptive to what, what's around you. That's true. Because, you know, you hit somebody with these drones, like, you're going to mess them up. Like, imagine if you're flying. <laughs> well, thing, I mean, these like, things. Only yeah. beginners are yeah, flying I mean, like, <laughs> Komodo. That's why we're here in this it's giant empty. field yeah. by ourselves. <laughs> when you guys are out on jobs, you guys do some pretty risky, crazy tricks, like buzzing past people, but. I mean, we make it you look have. like we're yeah. doing really crazy exactly. risk. <laughs> we're having these jobs that are permanently blocking off streets, having ITC yeah. on board. And People will see your guys' shots on TVs where you're like flying between cars and all that stuff, but like in those cases, they're stunt drivers. And look at these drones flying over us. That's illegal. Oh wait, no, they're birds. I think when I came and visited you yeah. that, that one time, <laughs> yeah. like a whole set of blocks were completely locked it was, off. It was crazy, like a rolling blockade. So like the, the police would stop them for we had three minutes. It's it's pressure, yeah, right? There's, there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Once you're flying these big cameras in the air, like you're carrying about what, nine, 10 pounds in the air. And like, that's a lot and like of- like $50,000. Yeah. $50, yeah. <laughs> one thing to also keep in mind is that with any FPV drone, you actually don't want to leave them them left on without flying for too long. These are pretty much air cooled, four fans basically. Like I've had to delay shots. We were plugged in, waiting for the director to say go, and as soon as they said go, poof, shots down. And you're just like, well, I can't take off now. And right, yeah, you, know, you need like a little sucks. heads up, yeah. It's yeah. not a good situation because you're just like, look, now we're waiting on drone again. Like, like oh, sorry. <laughs> and then you're just over there in the corner, like with the drone, just like, <laughs> like please. <laughs> the Avada's pretty smart about it, like traditional F FPV drones. They just kind of, they just cook. <laughs> All right, so now let's get into bind and flies, which is kind of in between a super smart DJI FPV drone and one that you build yourself. This one is from a company called iFlight, and you can see the air unit right in there. You can actually see that there's some heat dissipation right there. Now, before you get started, you're gonna want to plug in your air unit to your computer, activate it using DJI Assistant, free software, of course. Make sure it's on the latest firmware. And then you're basically just gonna wanna bind this to your goggles, poke that right there, get this into linking mode. Also, can't recommend this tool enough because you will be replacing propellers very regularly. I still have very similar settings to before. It's all grayed out because I'm actually recording right now. We just get used to these rates right here. Okay. I will say the tune is great. I've been trying to tune my own and uh, it kind of flies like crap, but this is really well tuned. That's the nice thing about a bind and fly is not only do they build it, but they also tune it and set it for you. And these rates are not bad either. It feels good and it's not too loud. And I'm also used to having a weight of a camera up top too. So just be able to fly naked like this. Well, this is cool how the frame kind of goes like this, which is important because when they're vertical like this, you see the bars in the shot because this lens is so wide of an angle. I want to say that the original field of view was 150 for the V1 and 155 FOV for this. So it's even wider, probably a slight design change that's going to happen with a lot of frames in order to accommodate that wider field of view. Solid build around this 
O3 air unit by iFly. Kind of nice having the auto record on takeoff option to record on just the goggles or the drone or on both. So I have that set. So as soon as I arm it, now it's uh, starting to record. And I think if I look over this way, you can see PETA trying to eat me. Man, having this level of clarity in the goggles is just unreal. Not having a camera up top makes it easier to splice through tighter spaces vertically. <laughs> you got so close it was out of focus. <laughs> oh, nope, didn't work. <laughs> oh. hey. So I was able to install this O3, it just plugs straight into the flight controller. It's a little more plug and play because you actually have a plug now, and this is the most standard type of plug that people are gonna use. But it is important that people check their wiring diagrams to make sure that, in particular, the positive and negative cables are in the same place. The wiring diagram is the same on this as the old air unit. Yeah. That's gonna make life simple for a lot of people, but not all flight controllers have that plug. So at that point, you would just snip off the plug and just solder it onto a board, fix it on a Emacs Baby Hawk, which I kind of like the idea of having it on something really small because after it was fully set up, it was still under 250 grams. The only other thing that I really had to consider was that the camera on there is wider than what we were seeing in the past. So I did have to just shave off a little bit of the TPU to just make sure it fit on there okay. The antenna is one antenna, but it plugs in at two spots. The way that this is designed is it's still two antennas coming out of the air unit, which is, that's how the V1 is, was as well, but they actually terminate into a single cap. Like a lot of pilots will have one antenna facing up and down or one left and right and whatever um, to try to optimize the signal. But in our testing, this this was just absolutely hands down the best way to go. And it was the simplest design. Oh, interesting. Cause I had thought you had it like that so that it's easier to mount if you only wanted to mount one antenna. But if you wanted to get a little more advanced, you could pull two antennas out of there. But you're saying that that is what you guys have found to be the best results. It's just that single antenna. You're gonna get the best range and the best performance exactly the way this is out of the box. So you do have MMCX connectors in here, which is the most common type of small connector. So if you did want to run antennas 190 degrees, 140 to five, or you had a super long quad build, like a long range, like seven inch or nine inch, then you could replace these antennas with your antennas of choice. So mounting the camera up front, two screws on the side, so that seems to fit in pretty commonly with what the setups are now. Well, one small benefit, the uh, because it's the same as the Avada, there are NDs already available for the Avada, so those NDs will work on O3 Air Unit. Now, another thing I thought was interesting was that if you crash and you have a battery ejection, downloaded the file, and I saw that that file was corrupt because it crashed and battery ejected, but then I plugged it back in, and I think it did like a little file recovery or something automatically because the next time I downloaded it, that file was okay. The way that the protocol is written is the battery, if the battery ejects or loses power, literally you're just gonna put the battery back in and it should close up the end of that file and give you a usable file. Which was really cool to see. And yeah, I think you only lose like the last second or two. There's a lot of cameras where if you crash it, then that file is done. And I've had that happen when I crashed the A7 on a Senna lifter. <laughs> Couldn't recover that yeah. file. Just like the previous hearing unit, you could just throw a micro SD card in the O3 unit itself. And if you forget that micro SD card, there's internal storage in there too. That improvement is specifically from user feedback of people saying, Oh, if I forgot my SD card, then I'm just out of luck. When I'm flying with the previous air unit, one of the first things I do is select a channel that I want to fly on. With the new transmission system, I notice that it's just by default on auto. The auto setting is the recommended setting. As you turn on each unit, it will detect if there's other units in the area, what's congested, and automatically select a part of the spectrum that is not congested. If you want to be able to control that manually, you have that option to do it. You have a 10, 20, or 40 megahertz option. I'm guessing 40 will give you the most amount of data rate, which is the cleanest, but you're taking up a majority of that frequency, right? Originally, it was decided that communicating it in forms of megabits would be more understandable for most of the users, but 40 is 50 megabit, 20 is 25. So it's just how it's referenced but it's, it's essentially the same thing. The original air unit used to be able to communicate with the original 
DJI FPV controller. The O3 is no longer compatible with that controller, right? And now we're going over to this controller, or if you want to use a separate protocol, like Crossfire, you can. You could use a third-party receiver if you wanted to, um, but everything is built into that one unit. So it saves you that additional install step and saves you room on your build. It is fully compatible with Betaflight, so just like any other controller, you're gonna be able to map all switches and available buttons on the controller. And then this is also gonna give you improved range over the previous FPV controller. That's right. The control range for the controller and video is the same. That's great because a lot of people probably already have that controller, maybe from the original FPV drone or with Avada. On a Mavic, this would always spring to the middle. It would do what this does. Exactly. <laughs> I, I was gonna be more PG and say it's like those door stoppers that you can like fling. Anyways, yeah. it's also like Nerf's nipple. <laughs> this one will spring in the middle this way, but it, the throttle stays where it's at. Yes, you're just constantly modulating the throttle. So right. like, rather than relying on the drone to like maintain an altitude or maintain a distance, you have to do it manually, but it gives you that full level of control. The throttle position for hovering changes depending on what the angle of the yep. quad is doing, but also the battery capacity. So when yep. you have a fresh battery, the throttle position to hover is very low versus near the end of it, it's like two thirds of the way up almost. Yeah. It comes springy where the throttle wants to go back to the middle. Yeah. And the first time I went into manual mode, I ignored the directions of de-springing it in yeah. a way. And I was like, I could still fly it manual and have it springy. It completely threw me off. I've had my Avada for a couple of months. I have not de-sprung it. Really? So I fly really? it manually with the spring. It doesn't was, it throw you off? I was too lazy to go in and like change it. So I just It's left just it two spring. screws. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm literally, it's two like, screws. I'm literally holding down when I want to go. Like you're doing a split S, I'm pulling back. Like, oh, yeah, wait, it's coming it, back. It took a second, but like, it's, like after the first flight, I was like, "Oh yeah, it's fine. Right, I don't need to it switch works. it." I, I did. I did a professional gig with a <laughs> sprung oh, throttle in manual mode. The first time I was with the original DJI FPV, and I didn't despring yeah. it. And like, as soon as I let off a little bit of pressure on the throttle, it sprung it back to the middle, and it just went. Whoa! And I was like, "Oh shoot!" <laughs> Please. But overall, the O3 Air unit, Avada level video transmission and the camera all packaged into whatever you want to put it into. And if all this FPV stuff sounds really complicated to you, DJI Avada. I think I'm going to start doing the comment read thing again. I really miss doing that because it, it made this more of a two-way relationship. The comments from the last video where I got 3D captured. While the technology is really up there. <laughs> There are influencers, and then there is Potato Jet. Love the science talk every time you do one of these. Well, thank you, Chris Parayino. That is the awkward part, is I'm really bad at pronouncing names. This guy's fascinating. I want to see so much more. Oh, yeah, Sven, the guy that runs Volucap, and he's an FPV guy. So, Sven, if you're watching, O3 Air Unit. Dylan's sponsored ads are becoming my favorite parts of your videos. <laughs> he is good at those. Well, since this video is about FPV, maybe we should read some comments from the Avada video. Motion iDrone Services says, uh, he's 61 years old. This new Avada has gotten me to want to try FPV, especially with the new technology coming out. I always thought, I'm too old for this stuff. It's a young guy's game. But I also tell myself that age is just a number and you're never too old to learn. The Avada does make it really easy. I definitely enjoy flying like these kinds of FPV drones, but it's definitely more time consuming and it's involved. Motion eye drone services, hopefully you got into FPV. It's fun. I'm not joking when I say I'm addicted to it. Like seriously, like every time we travel, I'm, I'm traveling with like 20 drones. This man is 100% the best reviewer. I bought the same backpack as him due to his review on it. I love the thing. And someone who's never flown FPV flying, this drone looks dope. Thank you, Rhino XR. But you know what I think is the coolest thing? Honestly, like I'm gonna be talking about this a bunch. If you wanna buy some overpriced milk crates, then this is the one because it's actually awesome. You can put different types of dividers in here. And the best part is that they stack and there's two sizes. There's a small one, the bigger one. Cidio, uh, they're not a sponsor, but I wish they were because right now I'm spending too much money on these damn expensive ass milk crates. Shout out to my buddy Mateo who uh, recommended them to me. That's it. Thanks for watching. See ya.